Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at finding the key features of quadratics from their equation. So not from the graph like we did in a previous video, but instead we're gonna be looking at an equation of a quadratic and we're gonna be given the equation of the quadratic in three different ways. We're gonna be given one in standard form, look at one in vertex form and one in factored form and how we can find all the key features. Now the key features that we're focused on is determining the direction of opening, the axis of symmetry in the vertex, and we're gonna look at finding the intercept so that way we can work our way, we can make a sketch. So let's look here at this first problem that we have, which is written over here in standard form. So I wanna find all key features given this equation of standard form. Well, the first thing that I would do is I would look at this problem and I would look at the coefficient of the x squared and notice how that coefficient is equal to one. So a is equal to one because it's in standard form. What that means is since a is greater than zero, we know that we're going to open up. So it opens upward, which means that this parabola is gonna look something like this. Now, if it looks like that, what that tells us is that the vertex down here, so the vertex is going to be a minimum. So let's go find what our vertex is. Well, to find the vertex, we first would need to find the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is going to be x is equal to, now I look here, we have a formula for this when it's written in this form, x is equal to negative b over two times a. Well, I need to identify what my variables are. We know that a is equal to one, or my constants, excuse me, b is equal to two, and c is equal to negative three. But to find my axis of symmetry, all I need are b and a, so I'd say it's equal to negative two over two times one. So the axis of symmetry is that x is equal to negative one. What that tells me is that's gonna be the vertical line that splits my parabola perfectly in half, and also my vertex here, my vertex is going to have that same x value. So what I need to do is I need to get the y value that goes there. To get the y value, what you're going to do is you're just simply going to put in negative one into the equation for x, and then you're going to evaluate. So everywhere I see an x in that problem, I'm gonna put the x value of my vertex, and we evaluate, and we wind up, we get one minus two minus three, and that gives us negative four. So there is our vertex, and we know that it's a minimum. We stated that a little bit earlier. All right, so next we're gonna find our intercept. So the y-intercept, we simply put in zero for all of our x's. And so what that means is as a coordinate, it's gonna be zero comma something because the first numbers are x value. And then so we put in zero for all the x's into the function and we're gonna wind up with zero squared plus two times zero minus three and that gives us negative three as a value. So this graph will cross the y-axis at negative three. And then lastly, we wanna find our x-intercept and so to find the x-intercept, you're gonna make y is equal to zero and you're gonna solve for that. So the x-intercepts, we're gonna set the equation equal to zero. We gotta solve for x. So we get zero is equal to x squared plus two x minus three. And then we look at that and say, all right, well, we're gonna be able to factor this problem. All right, and so we try to factor that, that we're gonna have an x and an x. And then we're gonna have minus three or plus three minus one. And then we solve both of those. And so we'd get x is equal to negative three and we get x is equal to positive one. Those are the two places where this graph's going to cross the x-axis, which would be at negative three comma zero and at one comma zero. And then what we would do is we would put all this information together on a graph and we would evaluate. Now the information that we would plot would be our x-intercepts, our y-intercept, our axis of symmetry, and then our vertex. All right, so I pulled up Desmos here to, to do the sketching for us. And so what we'd see is you see in blue, the dashed vertical line is the axis of symmetry. That's at x is equal to negative one. We have our vertex at negative one, negative four, same thing that we got. Y intercept at zero, negative three. And then our x intercepts at negative three, zero, and one, zero. 
All right, so next we're going to go through and we're going to find all the key features for an equation written in vertex form, which is this form here. So I have a times x plus or minus a number squared plus k. Well, one of the first things that we'll do is we'll look at this a value. And just like if it, if it was written in standard form, if a is going to be greater than zero, it's going to open upward. And a if, if a is less than zero, it's going to open downward. So in our problem, we got a is equal to negative two, which is less than zero. So we know that this is going to open down. And so since it's opening downward, that means the parabola is going to look like an n this way, which means that the vertex is going to be a maximum, and that's going to be helpful for us. And we also can see that right here, a was less than zero, turns into a maximum. So what we want to do now is we want to go find our axis of symmetry and our vertex. Well, the axis of symmetry, when it's written in this form, is actually very easy. It's going to be x is equal to whatever this number is here. As long as it's written as x minus, the axis of symmetry is just going to be x equals whatever h is. So we have an axis of symmetry that's going to be x is equal to 2. So the axis of symmetry is x is equal to 2. Now, if it was x plus 2, that means our axis would be negative 2. Next thing we would go find is the vertex. So hence the name. We call this vertex form. The reason is because it makes it super easy to find the vertex. The vertex in this form is going to be h comma k. So in our problem, our vertex would be 2 comma 32. All right, next thing to go find is the y-intercept. Remember, the y-intercept is what do you get when you put in 0 for x. So I'm going to evaluate f of 0. So I'm putting in 0 everywhere I see an x, and I'm going to evaluate what I get. So I get negative 2 times 0 minus 2 squared plus 32 and we evaluate that, that's going to wind us giving, giving us negative 2 times 4 plus 32. So negative 8 plus 32, that's going to give us negative 24. So the y-intercept's at negative 24. And then lastly, we want to find our x-intercept. So the x-intercept, what we do is we want to make y is equal to 0. And then we're going to solve for the x value. So we're going to take our equation and we're going to set our equation equal to zero and then we're going to solve. So we'd have zero is equal to negative two times x minus two squared plus 32. And then first thing we would do is we would minus the 32 to the other side and then we would rewrite what we get. So we'd get negative 32 is equal to negative two times x minus 2 being squared. Then we would divide both sides by the negative 2. And that's going to give us uh, 16 is equal to x minus 2 squared. Now, from here, the next thing that we would do is we would take the square root of both sides. Now, when I do that, I'm going to come up here because I'm out of room. The square root of 16 makes 4. The square root of x minus 2 being squared makes the absolute value of x minus 2. Anytime you take the square root of a square, it creates the absolute value. Now we solve this absolute value equation, which means that 4 could equal x minus 2. And then also, negative 4 could equal x minus 2. And then I solve both of those little math problems. So the first one, we'd add the 2 over. That's going to give us 6 is equal to x. And then the other one, we would add the 2 over. Negative 4 plus 2 makes negative 2. So I get two x values. What does that mean? We have two x-intercepts. We have an x-intercept at negative 2 comma 0. And then we have an x-intercept at 6 comma 0. All right, so I open up Desmos and I graph the parabola here. We have the axis of symmetry that cuts it right here in blue, the little dashed line. And so we want to confirm our finding, uh, findings about our key features. Notice it opens down. We have x-intercepts at negative 2, 0, and 6, 0. We have a y-intercept at 0, 24. And it's a good opportunity when you're doing this to look and say, well, wait a minute. We got negative 24. And I look back at my work here and I said, wait, negative 8 plus 32? That's positive 24. So I made a, made a mistake there. So that should have been positive. So good thing we checked our work here. So 
we had our X intercepts, our Y intercept was at 0 0.24, and then the maximum that we have is at 232. All right, so next way you could be given a quadratic is if it's written in factored form for us. And so what we're going to do, I generalize this whole process of what's going on right here and so that you can refer back to, but I'm going to zoom in so that way we're going to work with this question. And so we're looking and just like we did for the other ones to start with, we're looking at the first, the coefficient here. So in this case, a is equal to three. Since three is greater than zero, we know that we're going to open upward. So this parabola opens up, which means that graphically it should make that u. And that tells me that my vertex is going to be a minimum after I find it. Well, we start working our way through the process of finding it. Now, it's not written, it's not multiplied out, so I can't say, oh, my axis of symmetry is negative b over 2a. I can't go through and do a real easy equation here to find my um, axis of symmetry of vertex. What we have to do is we have to start by finding the x-intercepts here. Since this equation is in factored form for me, I could very easily solve this and say, well, this is going to set it equal to 0. And so I get 0 is equal to 3 times x plus 5 times x minus 9. Well, if I divide it by 3 first, I'd still get 0 is equal to x plus 5 times x minus 9, and you get two x values. You get x is equal to negative 5, and x is equal to positive 9. So our x-intercepts are at 5, 0, and it's at 9, 0, or excuse me, negative 5, 0, and at 9, 0. Now, how does this help us? Well, since we have a function that crosses the x-axis at those two points, so it crosses at negative 5, and it crosses at 9, and this is a parabola, so it has to make a perfect U or a perfect N. What's going to happen is your axis of symmetry is going to be right smack in between those two x-intercepts. So if I could find that axis of symmetry, then I could find my vertex. So the axis of symmetry is going to be the middle number in between five, negative 5 and 9. So what you're going to do is you, the x value that you're looking for Add together your two x-intercepts and then divide them by 2. That's going to give you the average. And so we wind up doing that. We get 4 divided by 2. The axis of symmetry is that x is equal to 2. So I know where my axis is, which means that I can now find my vertex because the vertex is going to have the same x value. I just got to get the y value down here. The way you get the y value is put in that x value in for those x's and evaluate. So we would have y equals 3 times, we put in 2, 2 plus 5 times 2 minus 9. And then we would just evaluate that expression to get the missing value for our vertex. So we'd have 3 times 7 times negative 7. We get 100, negative 147. So, wow, that one's going to be way on down there. So, negative 147 is the y value for our vertex. All right, so the only piece that we have left to find is the y-intercept. So, the y-intercept, what you do, remember, is all we have to do for y-intercepts is put in 0 for the x's, and evaluate. Well, so we're going to find f of 0. And so we'd have 3 times 0 plus 5 times 0 minus 9. And so we'd end up with 3 times 5 times negative 9. And we get negative 135. So the y-intercept in this problem is negative 135. Next, we'll go to Desmos and confirm our findings. All right, so I have a graph of the parabola up here in Desmos. We have the um, axis of symmetry here that's plotted in blue. That's at 2, which is the same thing that we got. All right, we have x-intercepts at 9, 0. And at negative 5, 0, we got that as well. We have a y-intercept at 0, negative 135. And the last part to confirm is our 
vertex, which is at 2, negative 147. All right, one more thing. Let's say we're given three different functions in three different forms, and we want to compare the large compare their largest output values. So let's say that I have this parabola here, and then we have this one in the table, and then we have this one here in the graph. And so we want to uh, put the func following functions in order of smallest maximum value to largest maximum value. All right, well, to figure out this first one on the left, I need to find out where the vertex is. Now, if I could multiply this thing all the way out, but if I'm going through it and say, all right, let's go figure out where the vertex is going to be at, well, if I find my x-intercepts first, that first x-intercept, the number that makes that equal to zero is going to be positive four. And then the second x-intercept is going to be at negative two. Now I know if the graph crosses the x-axis there that the vertex has got to be in the middle. Now the question is, well, which way is this going to open? So I know that if I multiply this out, I'd have negative x squared, which means it's going to have to make like an n, so it's going to do something kind of like this here, which means that if I could figure out where the axis of symmetry is, I could find my vertex. The axis of symmetry is going to be halfway in between those two numbers. So what I would do is I would add together the two x-intercepts, and then I would divide them by 2, and so that's going to give us an x value of 1. So x equals 1 is where the vertex is going to be. I need to get the y value. Well, to get the y value, simply put 1 in for the x's and see what we get. So I'd have 4 minus 1 times 1 plus 2, and we end up with 3 times 3, and we get 9. So the maximum here is at y is equal to 9. So I know what the maximum is of f. f has a max of 9. Well, now let's go look at what g would be. g is given to me in a table. And so I'm just looking at what's going on in my table. I go negative 3, negative 1, 3, 3, 1, 3. Here's the thing about a parabola is they are, they are symmetric, so they're going to repeat themselves on the left side and the right side of each other. So if I'm looking, notice how I have 3, 1, and 3, and then you have, or now you have negative 3, 1, and 3, and then you have 3, 1, and negative 3 again. So what that is telling me is that the parabola is coming up and then it's coming back down. And so in terms of what we have, we have a val we'd have a value of negative 3 somewhere in terms of a y value, and which would be at negative 4. And then we'd have a y value of 1. And then we'd have a y value of 3. And then we'd turn around and we'd go up to our top and then we'd come back down because we can only have one maximum and then we start coming back down. And I'm just writing the y values and not their x values here. So what I know is that it has to have a y value bigger than 3. All right, but how much bigger than 3 is the big question. It's actually not going to be that much bigger than 3 because look at the how what the changes are going to be. As I increase by 1, like I increase by, go from negative 3 to 1, I increase by 4, and then I only increase by 2, and so it's only going to be slightly bigger than 3. So for the sake of this, let's say it's going to be like 3.5 3 in here. Let's say the max is going to be around 3.5. It might be smaller or might be a little bit more, but just to give us a ballpark. So we're going to say this one's going to be somewhere just a little bit bigger than 3. So right now, what we know is we know that F is bigger than G. Well, now we get one more of these, and we're given the graph and say, all right, well, I look here at H, and wait, that one's the easiest one of all. The maximum value of H is going to be when Y is equal to 8. So what that means is I know 8 is going to be bigger than G but less than F, so F is going to be bigger than H, and then that is also going to be bigger than G.